Today I'm going to be doing a book review on on Pudge and Prejudice um, and just to be clear I did get paid to write this review. I do write reviews for, for Lone Star Literary Life. I've talked about them in my past videos but if you are new they are a great organization that helps local Texas authors just get the word out about their books coming out or that are already out. And um, they also are just a really great resource for all things happening in Texas that is book related, such as like any kind of like virtual events or up and coming authors, up and coming books, anything book related, they're pretty much on it. So I'll link their website down below and you can subscribe to their newsletter and all their social medias. But even though I did get paid to write this review, all um, opinions are my own. So like I said, I'm going to be doing this review on this book called Pudge and Prejudice and it is by A.K. Pittman. And a little bit about our author. She's an award-winning author of 13 novels, including the Christie nominated Sister Wife series and the critically acclaimed The Seamstress. She's an enthusiast for all things writing. She leads two different write writers groups helping to bring new voices to the world of books. When she's not writing, Allison teaches middle school English, working as a conduit to introduce her students to new, fresh literature. And yeah, so when I do um, do reviews for Lone Star Literary Life, I do write a um, blog post as well, so a written review. And so I'll, um, I'll link that down below. When you click on that, you actually can enter um, into a raffle as of when this video posts, you can enter into the raffle and you can follow our author on all her social medias and everything that's good is listed down there below. So um, a little bit about Preju Pudge and Prejudice. I am just gonna read the synopsis on the back and then I'll get into the review. It's 1984. After moving to Northern Field, Texas with her family, Elise Nevitt faces the challenge of finding her place in a new school one dominated by social status and Friday night football when Elisa's effortlessly beautiful older sister Jane starts dating golden boy Charlie Bingley. Elise finds herself curious about Charlie's popular and brooding best friend Billy Fitz. Billy's notion of girlfriend material and Elisa's own body insecurities eventually complicate the relationship leaving Jane and Elisa's exceedingly blunt friend Lottie to step in and help Elise accept herself for who she is, gene size, and all. So right off the bat, um, I just want to say that um, I believe this is supposed to be kind of like an 80s parody of the Pride and Prejudice. I've actually never read Pride and Prejudice, so I couldn't say if like there's any like similarities or an 80s touch to it, so I can't really speak on that, um, but I do believe other reviewers of this book um, for, with Lone Star Literary have um, spoken on that. Like I said, link below and all the info will be there. But I really want to give props to this book. Um, again, <laughs> I've said this before on my past videos, but I'm not really into YA books. It's just not really my thing, but um, I saw the cover of this and when I read the synopsis, I was like, ah, I'm going to take a chance on it. One of my guilty pleasures is watching classic 80s films. Um, I've watched, I think I pretty much watched all the John Hughes films and reading this just reminded me of a classic like John Hughes 80s teen movie and so I was really pleasantly happy to when I was reading it I could picture it as an 80s film and it was just a really fun read and so um, like I said, I could picture everything really well. The author does a really great job of um, just creating this world that you may have forgotten or that you don't really know about. Small town, Texas in the 80s. Um, she, just she just creates this perfect world and one that you can easily see in your mind. And it's just, the setting's just really great. And um, it's just fun seeing how the 80s was during this time in like a smaller rural town versus um, like city 
movies. I feel like a lot of 80s movies are set in like big cities. Um, of course, not every one of them, but um, that's, what we, we, that's what we usually see. So it was kind of a nice like, um, turn of events. And what also makes this um, book really fun are the characters. Uh, the characters are just really relatable. Um, even though I did not grow up in the 80s, um, I can definitely relate to some of the people in the book. And I can also picture which one of my friends, especially my friends from high school, which one would be who in these scenarios. So it's, it's just really fun to kind of just like relate to these characters. And also our main character, she lives with four other sisters and I grew up with only sisters as well. So it was kind of like a, a fun dynamic to just relate back to my life. And, and I'm sure that anyone who reads this story will find themselves figuring out which one of the many characters but the few characters that we do encounter, which one they were in their high school days. And then um, there are also not only just relatable characters, but there were also like quite a few relatable scenarios. So this book is set in high school in the 80s. And so even though, again, can't relate to the time era, it was still like teen drama and stuff just doesn't, kind of go away. It's kind of timeless. You kind of have the same scenarios as there's a mean girl and you fall in love with a guy who may be of a more like stat more higher status quo than you are and so uh, there's just like um, that's like the main scenario but there are quite a few like scenarios throughout the story where I was like oh I remember going through something like that or I remember somebody else, like, there was a whole thing about this in high school. So um, even though it is set in a different time period, it still feels like, oh, I remember that from high school. You can somehow relate to the scenario in a some way, shape, or form. And so um, you just really felt connected to the book overall. And then the drama, like I said, um, it's teen drama. And I like that the story isn't like, it's not overly like madness everywhere. There's nothing like too crazy coming out of the woodwork. It's kind of just, it's the typical teen drama, but there are some more twists and turns um, throughout the book. So uh, when you're reading, you just really don't want to put it down. I know I didn't really want to put it down. And I read it, I read it, I read this book pretty fast and there is a lot going on but it never felt like overbearing stuff going on as well. It was kind of the typical stuff and then there was some a little bit of non-typical scenarios as well but it's not like they were the book was trying to be something it was not. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You know, it just felt natural. Um, like all the drama and the plot points. It was just like a natural feel when reading the story. And overall, it's just a really fun story. Um, I really enjoyed reading this. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite books of 2021 so far. Um, I, I just, it was just a fun plot, a fun story. Um, and I really like, like I said, I really like um, 80s teen movies, coming of age movies. And um, if you like that kind of story, um, definitely, you can definitely pick this one up. It's a great, read. Um, it's not crazy long. It's 338 pages, um, but it's it's just a really fun story. And then the author does this thing. The author does like a really great um, thing where like she just puts in, because uh, the main character, she's really smart. And so like she puts in little words at the very beginning of each chapter and then like has a definition for the word and it kind of like correlates to what that chapter is gonna touch on or talks about something in that relation and then also the chapters are um when it says like chapter one chapter two chapter three it's all like little cassette tapes i'll try to show a photo so yeah i love that the author like did that little touch and just made it her own and the quotes in the beginning are all like 80s pop culture people so it's just it's just really fun and I love that I love when authors do um, just create that little touch in their stories so yeah overall um, it was a really great book um, I definitely recommend to anyone who wants to 
um, pick up a new book this year. It is YA, but I feel like it can relate. It's relatable to all ages. So anyone who likes 80s stuff and fun stuff and maybe like coming of age, less of life stuff, definitely um, pick up Pudge and Prejudice. And uh, I do give this book a five out of five. So really great one. But that is it for me today. Um, thank you for tuning in to my um, book review. And until next time, happy reading.